Hello everyone and welcome to the 17th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can use an NS Toolbar in our Coco applications. So an NS Toolbar is made up of basically two components. One is the NS Toolbar itself, and the second are the individual NS Toolbar items, which are the little things or each thing that you see in an NS Toolbar. So we can uh, customize these to a pretty big extent, but for this tutorial I'm just going to be showing you how we can uh, create ones with images. So basically uh, for this, what we're, what we're going to want to do is go into our search box down here and we can type in toolbar, or just tool if you want. So anyway, um, we can drag out our toolbar that we see in the search box and once you get the little addition sign to add it to your window, you can just drop it and it'll snap right to the top. And just to clarify, NS toolbars are basically those things that you see throughout Coco uh, that look like this. So um, Xcode has one, Mail has one, Pages has one, Keynote, Numbers, uh, many, many um, Apple made applications have them and many non-Apple made applications have them as well. But they're basically an easy way that you can access uh, various things. And, you know, this default uh, NS Toolbar gives you kind of a key or an idea of how that might work. But anyway, to edit what you have in your NS Toolbar, you can go ahead and click it or double click it, depending on what you've already done. And we can delete the items that are in this as well. So we can just hit delete, delete, and we can select this print option and hit that delete as well. So I just got rid of the things that we're not going to be using in this tutorial because I just want to show you uh, what we're going to be adding. So uh, we can leave the spacing and stuff in there because that's kind of you know normal stuff. But what we can have is we can add our own NS toolbar items. So over in the search box, you can see we have image toolbar item right below our toolbar, and we can drag that in if we want as well. So draw, drag and drop that in like so, and you'll see that we now have a toolbar item added. We can then rearrange this toolbar item, and we can change its values as well. So what we want to do first of all, though, is you'll notice that it's not actually in the toolbar, even though we've added it to this toolbar palette. To add it to the toolbar, you want to add it to your default toolbar items. So to do that, you can just drag this icon right here into the default toolbar. And let me just do that quickly so it doesn't re, uh, distort that. Anyway, uh, you can drag that into your default toolbar items right here. And now we have the toolbar item right there. So we can rearrange this as well. And now we have the toolbar item sitting in our toolbar right there. But of course, it doesn't have any image, and we haven't changed the label, so it doesn't really make much sense to use this yet. So what we want to do is go into our Attributes Inspector over on the right here, and we can select the image that we want to use for this NS Toolbar item. So by clicking on the little right arrow, we can get a bunch of system images that are used throughout Mac OS X. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using NS User, but again, you can use whatever you want. So now you'll notice right below this image selection, you also have a label and palette label. And actually, before I talk about that, um, you can also add your own image as well, which is probably the most important part. But you can uh, just add your own image by dragging it over into your files over here and just copy the image into your Xcode project. And then you can just type in the image name right into there. And then you'll have that image. But anyway, for this, uh, we have our NS user, which is just um, just macOS default or a system icon. So with that, now we have the label and the palette label. So you might be wondering why there's two different label options, and I'll show you why that is. So let's go ahead and change our label to say hello. And you'll notice, if I scroll in a little bit here, we have say hello and toolbar item. And you'll see that those are two separate labels. And the reason they have that is there's you can have a label up here in the toolbar be different than the actual selection label. So for example, if you wanted to be a little more descriptive with maybe a longer title when you're selecting the item in your toolbar, um, you could change the palette label to be something else. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to show you what you can do. So we'll just change this palette label to hello. And that's probably not more descriptive than say hello, 
but you can see that once we change the palette label, it changes what uh, the label looks like in this customization area versus what it'll look like in the toolbar. So anyway, that's that. And one more thing I wanna show you is how you can use the tag attribute. So the tag by default is negative one. That's what all the toolbar items are by default. But we can change this to whatever we want. And for this, I'm just gonna set it to zero. And the tag is useful, for example, if we wanna call or wanna send the same message to a class uh, from multiple NS, um, NS toolbar items. So for example, if we have uh, two NS toolbar items, and they both call the same method, but we want to figure out which ones actually call uh, the method, we can determine that by the tag that is associated with the NS toolbar item. So I'll demo that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and add another image toolbar item so that we can see that difference in a second. So just drag out another image toolbar item, like so, and we'll quickie uh, quickie, quickly edit this item. So we can go over to the attributes inspector again. We'll set this to, I don't know, let's do NS computer maybe. And we can set the label to, what we, to be whatever we want. So we'll just call it computer. And we'll call this computer as well. And we can drag this icon right into there and rearrange. And there we go. So now we have this toolbar fully made out with um, the say hello and the computer and all that. And actually, I forgot to set the tag on the computer, so let's do that right now. Click on your uh, computer, and we're going to set the tag to be 1. So the computer icon or NS toolbar item has a value of 1 for its tag, and the hello has a value of 0 for its tag. So we can hit done when we're done with that. And the last thing we want to add is a NS text field, and we'll just drag out our label here. So drag that out, and we can drag this across. We can center that, and we can just, let's just get rid of the title that we have for that label as well. So now we just have a blank label just sitting in the center of this application. So now that we have that, let's actually create the code that we can use to connect these toolbar items and this label. So we can do this by just doing file new file and doing command n if we want as well. We can go ahead, hit objective C class, subclass of NS object, and we'll just call it app controller like we normally do. So once we've done that, we can save that. And now we have that new app controller class right here. So we can go ahead and set these things in our interface. So we want to connect our uh, we, want to can, we want to make an IB outlet for our label, and we also want to have a IB action for both of those NS uh, toolbar items. So to do that, we want one IB outlet for the NS text field, and not NS text, NS text field, and we're just going to call that label. So now that we have that, we also want to make an IB action for this as well. So IB action and we'll just say toolbar action. And of course we have to pass in ID sender. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and implement this toolbar action method right here. So let's just swap over to your implementation file of app controller, copy and paste that uh, if you want. But now we wanna implement this. So what we can do is we're just gonna set the labels string value to be whatever the label is of our NS toolbar items. So to do that, we can just say label set string value, and we're gonna be setting its string value to the label of our NS text, or I keep saying NS text, I mean NS toolbar items that are selected, or whatever is calling or sending this message to our app controller. So we haven't really used our sender parameter much in our IB actions yet, so I'll show you how to do that right now. So every method or every uh, thing that uses these actions, it'll pass itself in as the sender. So we can basically, since the sender is any object, we're connecting this to our toolbar items, and so we can use the toolbar items, whatever methods are associated with those. So we're just going to say sender, and in this case, again, since the sender is those NS toolbar items, it's whatever is sending this message, 
So the sender, we're just going to be getting the sender's label. And now that label method, which is in the NS toolbar, uh, is related to NS toolbars, then that label will just return an NS string, and then of course we use set string value to set the string of our label. So the last thing we have to do, of course, is connect all these things together. So we can add a new NS object to this, drag and drop her over here. And uh, of course we want to change this in the identity inspector. The class we're using is at controller. And we want to make the connections. So you can right click on our app controller right there or go to, go to the connections inspector. Connect our label right here. So we're connecting our label to our app controller class on our window there. And we also want to connect our toolbar action to both of those NS toolbar items. Again, they're both calling that same method. So to do this, we want to select our label and then select it again so we get that pop-up. And now we can uh, attach the toolbar action, IB action, to both of these items. So drag it to there and drag it there. And now you'll notice that we have both our hello item and our computer NS toolbar items connected to this one IB action. So what that means is, of course, both of these items, when they're pressed, are going to send the same message to our app controller. But of course, since we're passing in or we're getting the sender's label value, whatever uh, one is pressed, we're going to be getting the individual label of whatever thing is being pressed. So we can go ahead and run this now that we have everything connected. No problems there. We can customize our toolbar if we want, just a feature of NS Toolbar. And you'll see we got all these nice options here. And we can drag and drop different elements in and out pretty simple. And if you want, you can also right click the NS toolbar and you can customize it that way. So if you wanted, you could get rid of this customize option. Doesn't really matter. But anyway, that's uh, some, just some nice things about NS toolbar. You can also collapse the NS toolbar just by clicking that nice uh, little button on the top right. And that uh, does a nice little animation to collapse the NS toolbar. So with that out of the way, let's test out that IB action that we connected to our um, two NS toolbar items. So if we click computer, we can see that computer is now the thing that's set as our label string value. If we click say hello, now say hello is the value of our label. And again, that's because we're getting the sender's label value. And sender is always the item that is being or is sending the message itself. So if we're clicking our computer, the sender is going to be that individual NS toolbar item, and it's going to be taking that uh, NS toolbar item's label. So now that we have that, we can quit this, and we're going to go talk about the tags that we were referring to earlier. So if we go back into our app controller, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we connected the toolbar items tag to the individual toolbar items. So the user one, or the one with the picture of the guy had a tag of zero and the one with the computer had a tag of one. So if we want to use these tags, we can also use those as well. And if we wanted to see which tag we're referring to, we could just say sender and we can call the tag method on that. So basically what this allows us to do is figure out which item is calling this method. So since both of these NS toolbar items are calling the same toolbar action method, we can technically figure out which one is calling it by asking it for its tag. So we're asking the sender for its tag, and then we get whatever NS integer value our tag returns, and we're comparing it to this. So if the tag has a value of zero, which is equivalent to our uh, NS toolbar item with the user, or the little guy picture, then we can then uh, just say, well, we're going to set the label value to your um, string or your label value. So if, for example, though, we aren't using that sender tag of zero, so if we're using the computer NS toolbar item, then we want to do something else. We're going to say label set string value, and we're just going to make it a null value. So basically, we're just going to cancel um, whatever we wrote. So there's nothing going to be displayed in our label. So let me just run through that one more time. Our sender is whatever is being passed in when we're calling this. So for example, if it's the toolbar item with the computer, that individual NS toolbar item is going to be passed in as the sender. 
we're testing to see what the sender tag is in this example. If it's a value of zero, that means it's that user icon that we set as a tag value of zero, and the tag value of the computer icon was a value of um, one. So if it's basically the user icon is going to be setting the string value to its label, but if it's going to be anything else, we're going to be setting it to the string value of nothing. So we can go ahead and run this since we've already made all those proper connections. We can see if we hit say hello, we get say hello since it has a tag value of zero. But since our computer has a tag value of one, it's going to blank out the nice little uh, label value that we had before. So that's just a way that you can identify which toolbar item you're talking about, and you, that's again by using its tag. So anyway, this was a, just a nice little way of introducing you to NS toolbars. I showed you how to add individual NS toolbar items, how to use the tag value, the different labels, and add the image, of course, to those values. And then you can connect those to any IB action that you want, and you can pretty much do whatever you want from there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on NS toolbars. Uh, we'll definitely have more on this in later but uh, it was pretty heavily requested on the channel, so I figured I'd try to get this out of the way. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, and more tutorials will be coming.